。在这场就职典礼的时候，奥巴马也对 climate change 提出了他的看法。他认为美国必须面对气候变迁。他的第一任当时曾经出席了哥本哈根大会，那个时刻他没有能力按照美国国内的情势。他没有能力对国际做出了承诺。回到华府的时候，一场大风雪，也是史上在十二月最大的风雪，迎接了奥巴马。然后再紧跟着就是去年的三地风灾。奥巴马在第一任期的时候，曾经一度由民主党主导的参议院差一点通过了清洁能源法案，结果不幸发生了墨西哥漏油事件。这个事件呢，使得美国的清洁法案没有办法通过，因为当时少数共和党是跟石油公司绑在一块儿的。他们认为，如果海外的钻油可以通过的话，愿意同意清洁能源。结果，因为墨西哥的漏油事件，这些共和党所主张的海外漏油呢，引起了美国民众强烈的反弹。结果，清洁能源法案也因此胎死腹中。这次在就职典礼里头，奥巴马明白的再次点出：如果我们不对气候变迁做出任何的努力，我们等于背叛我们的下一代。Do you like a banana, little guy? No, I want a thick wool blanket, please. It's freezing. 这不是童话故事场景，但北半球在二零一三初时，确实因暴雪成了一片银白世界。空中交通首当其冲，号称欧洲最繁忙的伦敦希斯洛机场，上千航班被迫取消，铁路火车严重误点。分析师估计，少说三分之一的人无法上班，酿成四亿英镑、一百八十三亿台币经济损失。Normally we make sales about thousand pounds in weekends, then it might drop to five hundred pounds. Let's say that like half, it would drop to half. Yeah. How many percent of your business has been infected by the snow? Like eighty percent. 不少车辆就这样卡在路上，动弹不得。行驶中的校车就算绑了雪链，稍不留意还是会滑出路面。孩子们只能坐在滑板车里拖行。德国状况也好不到哪儿去，除了车型困难，空中枢纽法兰克福机场半数航班取消，排队人潮久久不能散去。由于滞留人数实在太多，过境饭店无法支应，机场于是摆起床架，让游子都能有个好眠。Paris, 12 straight days with below average temperatures. You were down as low as minus eight. Berlin, you've you haven't been above freezing since the 11th, and this could be a stretch of 18, maybe 20 days. As we look at the U.S., record warm, 27 degrees in L.A., but the cold that is dropping southward in the U.S. is extremely dangerous. Atop Mount Washington, New Hampshire, the wind chill was minus 65 degrees Celsius, minus 85 Fahrenheit. Look at Winnipeg, minus 43 right now. 北加在这波激动中成为焦点，因为欧洲连年暴雪早就不足为奇，但为何今年冷风得以单刀直入，冠进北美大陆 ？We've been losing the sea ice at the Arctic Circle, and so because it hasn't frozen over yet, we don't have a very tight jet stream. And what we have is this negative phase of our Arctic oscillation, we call it, and the cold air pours into parts of North America. In fact, it's colder in Ontario, Canada, and near Quebec than it is at the North Pole. 时间就在奥巴马第二任就职后，仿佛全球暖化给美国的末日预警。典礼刚结束，从加拿大一路南下的冷气团就让美国三分之二国土启动。西从北达科他，东到纽约，多处发布低温特报。光是威斯康星、明尼苏达、伊利诺三州，就至少三人在户外被冻死。纽约大雪也破三十年纪录，两天就深达六十三公分。Well, the wind is just ripping. It makes it ten times worse than it should be. 一些你我想都没想过的场景，看得让人傻眼。解冻香蕉被当锤子用，湿衣服晾在空气中不会干，硬是被冻成铁板。就连消防员灌救失火工厂，强力水柱也瞬间凝结，蔚为奇观。Pretty high, you know, tense. And then I, this morning I came. My son wants to come and look at it. Now I look, it's like an ice castle. 但美国人早已无心赏玩。因为极端气候不再是那个不着边际、被渲染扩大的异端邪说，而是年复一年真实上演的生活情节。It's on the way to landfall, probably just a few hours from now. It should all be sandy coastline right here, but now it's a foaming brown mess of Atlantic angry ocean 
thanks to Hurricane Sandy. This was a devastating storm, maybe the worst that we have ever experienced. Hurricane Sandy. 出现飓风的纽约，去年十月才被山底下的星河决定。如今耶诞节的雪一路加大，让灾区根本无力喘息。IMF 总裁拉加德在举世瞩目的达沃斯论坛中。特意在分析经济前先谈气候变迁，忧心全球再不采取行动，我们的下一代将被炙热烧灼。奥巴马也不忘在就职演说中大声疾呼：“救救上帝命令我们照顾的地球。” We will respond to the threat of climate change, knowing that the failure to do so would betray our children and future generations. Some may still deny the overwhelming judgment of science, but none can avoid the devastating impact of raging fires and crippling drought and more powerful storms. The path towards sustainable energy sources will be long and sometimes difficult, but America cannot resist this transition. We must lead it. 然而，在如此盛大的场合，气候变迁议题却只剩卑微而感性的诉求。实在是因为奥巴马第一任提出的清洁能源法案当年过不了参院，如今受制于两党夹杀和石油产业阻挠，上路机会更是渺茫。所以，别再抱怨日后的怪天气，是你我种下的因，致使全球暖化所导致的极端气候以各种形式折磨着周围的亲友家园。